Hi and welcome to a new episode of the Yarn Flakes podcast. My name is Audrey and this is a podcast where I talk about all of my yarny creations. Thank you so much for joining me for this new episode. I hope you're doing well. Um, firstly, I want to thank you for your feedback and help on last podcasts where I asked you for some help regarding the light situation. Um, most of you seem to prefer the neutral one, uh, even though you do get used to the blue light, uh, the neutral uh, light seems to be a bit more popular. So I will go with that, uh, and if I ever notice that some colors get messed up, I will uh, switch if necessary. But um, yeah, uh, I have a podcast that, unlike last time, uh, does not have any sense of cohesion because <laughs> I have a sock pattern uh, to talk about and a textured sock pattern and then a color work yoke. Um, so yeah. I'm not going to delay any further. You can find timestamps to all the different sections of the podcast in the description down below. So if you want to skip anything or find a project in particular, feel free to look at that. I also put links to everything that I talk about, the patterns that I'm mentioning, the yarns I'm using, as well as links to my social media, my patterns, which are for sale on... I don't know what that was, on uh, Ravelry, Fay Hip and Lovecraft, and my Patreon page if you would like to support my uh, business and have access to some behind the scenes content. So yeah. I am going to start with a new pattern that I just published and it is it requires a bit of an explanation um, because I'm slowly crunching into my uh, what thing I use as a library. I bookshelf. They're not really shelves. <laughs> That's kind of the issue. Last uh, in the last two years or something, I don't remember if it's 2019 or 2020. Uh, I published a sock collection in spring, which were three patterns of socks with lace motifs on them, and I really really liked doing this. You know, I love knitting socks. Uh, I think they're the perfect little projects to play and have fun with yarns and textures and be done uh, rather quickly and rather easily because it's a small thing. And I published these three lacy socks, uh, like I don't remember if it's, I think it's 2020, I'm not sure. And yeah, I really enjoyed doing that and I wanted to uh, do something similar but with textures instead of lace. So there will be a tiny bit of lace but mostly it's going to be sock designs with cables, ribbing, twisted stitches, slipped stitches, uh, that will be the core of the motifs in those socks. So I also uh, decided to <laughs> be a little bit more clever about it than last time and actually have the socks go from the simplest to the most difficult. None of them are really difficult, but I wanted them to be um, a way for people who like me, like to use socks to learn new techniques and improve and get more confident. So that is the goal of these designs, basically. They, will, they are all uh, accessible to beginners, um, even though my designs don't explain per se the general theory of how to make a sock, I always have beginners, uh, first time sock knitters in my testers, and this is like what? Like, I don't, 10 to 15 sock designs and I always had beginners and it always goes pretty smoothly as long as um, someone is willing to <laughs> to learn and the, the trick with sock knitting is that if you've never done a sock and you're looking at instructions for a heel or something you just have to do what's written, even if you don't understand it. Um, we all went through this, like that's kind of how sock knitting works, I feel. It's like, just just do what's written. Like when I first made my sock, I just had no clue what any of it meant. So I just diligently did what was written and then understood after the fact. But the sock instructions are totally uh, complete and within themselves you can uh, absolutely make it your very first socks, if you like. 
um, that has never been a problem for the many beginner sock knitters who have um, tested my patterns very um, nicely. So, yes. The thing is, if if you would like also to use this as a way to... I just lost my... <laughs> I didn't know where I was, what I wanted to say. If you would like this to be also your first time trying cables or uh, slip stitches, twisted stitches, that is the core idea behind this. Um, all of the pattern will slowly grow in difficulty. You will learn how to make um, cables, how to follow a motif while you're decreasing, how to read your knitting. And all the patterns will have both charted and written instructions just to make sure that everyone has their preferred method of reading a motif. And yeah, um, one big difficulty when working with textures and things is reading a chart. Uh, most people have a point where <laughs> they need to learn how to read a chart and it can be quite uh, daunting. So I thought small project, having both options at the same time can help you compare and things. So yeah, these are sort of the little bits that <laughs> will be in the in these patterns. And the first one, the most uh, simple one, is already out. So what will happen is I have four, four designs here, which you can see, and they will be published one every month uh, from now on. So the second one will come next month in May, third one in June, and the last one in July. But we are starting with the most basic one, which are the Nanthema socks. And I put them on my blockers. I'm sorry, I have the ugly plastic blockers. <laughs> uh, but they are mostly ribbed socks, which is why um, they look better if they're on a blocker. And these are the most beginner friendly, basically. If you've never made a cable, um, you shouldn't have any issue uh, with this. The goal with this design was to teach you how to read your stitches, basically, in a very simple manner. You start a ribbing sequence, which is a bit random, but not quite. And this is to force you <laughs> to read your stitches, because you do basically one round, and then all you have to do is look as, at your knitting. And if you see a knit stitch, you knit it. If you see a purl stitch, you purl it. And that way you don't actually have to keep track of a motif. And that is a skill that is very, very helpful. And that makes everything so easy. It's like, if you're ever impressed at how easily people keep track of motifs, they're cheating. Uh, they're just reading their stitches, which is the easy way out of this. Um, but yeah, I um, also put a little cable running down the side. So the socks are, mir are mirrored and they're in this way. <laughs> and you have a cable going down the exterior side of the sock. You can do it the opposite way if you prefer and have the cable on the interior of your feet if you prefer. But this is a very, very simple cable with basic crossings, four stitches, crossings. And like I said, it is both charted and written in case you, you would like to do it even if you hate charts. <laughs> And yeah, you have the ribbing that continues along the toe. And let me show you the front of the sock, how it looks with the ribbing and the cable. And it goes all along the foot. Voila. So um, like most of my sock patterns, you have two heels instructions. If you want, you can do either, like I did here, a heel flap and gusset, or you can do a German short row heel. Uh, you have both options written out in the pattern. And yes, it comes in multiple sizes, um, as usual. And you um, have specific charts for the ribbing and things for every sizes. So it's hopefully <laughs> as clear as possible. And um, yes, the thing with this collection is I 
picked up the premium uh, Regia sock yarns. So Regia, Regia, I don't know how to say. I don't know how to say the G in the German way. And you know this brand of like broth cubes sauce thingy, Maggi, Maggi. That's the thing. I never know how to say it because I can't remember what the advertisement says. And I don't know if you're supposed to say Maggi or Maggi. And people always make fun of me. <laughs> and I don't remember which way they make fun of me for. So the G in German is a problem for me. So <laughs> please tell me if it's a hard G or if it's a G. <laughs> Uh, but the Regia sock yarns, um, they do a lot of basic sock yarns, but they also have a more premium range of yarns, uh, which includes a yak-based blend and a silk-based blend. And at a yarn festival last year, I saw someone knitting a pair of socks with the yak blend, and it was a beautiful, beautiful pair of socks, which had like a diamond pattern in uh, pearl stitches. And the depth of the color on the yak base was so, so beautiful. It looked like it was cables and it actually had a 3D thing. But no, it was just pearl stitches. And I really, really liked that that sock. And it gave me the idea to try uh, these bases for this collection. So this one is the silk one. And it is really, really, really soft. <laughs> um, soft to the point where I'm afraid it might peel. So I haven't worn them yet because I wanted them to be decent <laughs> and clean to show you. Um, but I will start wearing them. And in case I forget to give you feedback in a couple of weeks or months, ask me and I will tell you if it does peel. I'm just always afraid when things are so soft and they have a little bit of a halo. Yeah, I don't know if it's just that it's that soft or if it's going to peel. Um, if any of you actually use the Regia Silk yarn and uh, you have worn it and you have some feedback on how it holds during time, please um, let us know in the comments so that people can be aware. But it does have a beautiful definition with the silk and the little shine. Uh, this color is much darker than than it appears on, on the camera. It's uh, more like like so. And yeah, I really like how it looks. And it's so soft, it would be lovely as a sweater, as a as a shawl as well. Granted, <laughs> if it doesn't peel. But um, yeah, these are the Nantema socks. I hope you like them. Uh, so they are now available on Ravelry and Payhip. And for the release on Ravelry, they are 15% off with the code Nantema. So... That is it, and yeah, we'll see you in next month for the rest of the socks. And I'm a bit, I'm a bit bothered because I have a, I want to make a, a lace, full-on lace sock pattern, and I'm, my timing is a bit wrong because either I release them in August, or I have to wait for next spring. And in my mind, it's a little bit weird to have my sock collection finish in July. And then have a pattern in August that doesn't, that is not included. Silly, silly things, <laughs> silly issues, but I really, really want to make that pattern. So it just really reignited my, my sock um, knitting mojo. Like I have a lot, I want to knit plain socks with this soon. When I, um, when I'm in need for a simple design, I will I will knit uh, just regular vanilla socks with this beautiful, beautiful skein. This is Le Petit Potion uh, sock yarn, by the way, in... The, the, why do you do this? <sighs> She's my friend, I'm gonna tell her. I know she doesn't watch the, the podcast, and especially not the English one, but like... Daihyavana. Daihyavana. She does it on purpose because I use so much of her yarn and I have to say her names, <laughs> the names that she chooses for the colors and embarrass myself. Um, <laughs> uh, I am going to move on to a finished uh, project, which was a personal knitting project, which is the sweater that I'm wearing. 
which at the moment when you're watching this episode should be uh, available uh, normally. I'm filming this a bit in advance and uh, unless I'm mistaken, this was going to be to be released on April 6th. So it should be here. If not, it will be, and I will put the links anyway so that you can find it when it is. But this is a test knit that I was very lucky to do for Handmade Closet. And basically, it I started it started at the end of February and I just needed something a little bit joyful, a fun color work project. And I saw this call for test knit for testers and I just uh, applied and was very, very happy to be picked. So this is a top-down yoke with this very very beautiful flowery sun motif which I really really like. I had some Dererum Natura Ulis in my stash. I had a um, sweater quantity of the Cypress which is it's more green than what you can see here. It's more yeah it's more of a pine green really. And uh, it's more like that. <laughs> I don't know why that is granted correct color, but yeah, it's more, it's not as blue. And then I had some, I have lots of uh, that yarn for swatching because it's gray. And so I had the Poivre Blanc, the white color, the Aster, which is the lilac-y purpley color. And I ordered this golden greenish yellow which is, which is Jeune. And it uh, unintentionally ended up being very similar to what the designer, uh, to what Olga's uh, sample is, um, because she has like a blue base with white, pink and gold. So yeah, it's almost there, <laughs> but not quite. And I really like it. It's more bright and fun motifs than what I usually do. And I am obsessed. I really like it. Um, so you start with the neckline and it is a more open neckline than what I am used to. And so you do one by one ribbing. I'm considering uh, picking up to make it a little bit wider just because personal, personal preference. Uh, I have that thing which I hate it when my hair gets stuck under <laughs> my sweaters. Like, and um, yeah. I think I would prefer to be a little bit more tight. I will see. Um, I will see how I wear it. This is knitted in sport to thing, sport weight yarn, but it has a gauge that can be working fingering weight. So it's more lightweight of a sweater. So I just need to see, try and wear it a little bit during spring to see how I feel if I do like the open neckline or if I really just want to cinch it a little bit. And since I keep doing this, I do think <laughs> I much prefer a closer neckline, but um, it does have some short rows in the back, as you can see. And then you get into this beautiful, beautiful color motif, which is flowers or sun. Did I say the name of the pattern? It's here comes the sun. <laughs> so. And then you work the body. I made my body a little bit longer. Um, it's still cropped to be worn with my high waist pants and basically I did I know I needed a five centimeter hem two inches and then this color work motif basically at the end is the same height as this so if you don't have the same row gauge as the pattern you just measure that um, and so I knew I needed to leave 12 centimeter for the end and so I ended up with a 25 centimeter body that's nine inches and three quarter um do you say nine inches and three quarters or nine three quarter inches i do not know uh and then the sleeves which is my favorite thing i absolutely adore this motif it's what made me jump on the design and it's so beautiful and i like how it's so my <laughs> i just put this off blocking it's just it just got dry and so there are still some folds where it was laying flat as you can see but I just love it because you know often you have like a color work motif just at the end but the fact that it's here and it matches the I made it so that it matched here which is intended in the pattern but because I elongated the body I wasn't sure it would work but it actually did um, and then you have 
some decreases which are worked kind of like a hat you know like a cinched thing and I really really like that detail it's so beautiful you like it and it's such a clever motif too because you do have some colors where you have three colors per round some rounds where you have three colors per round basically when you're making the insides of the flowers or the sun the inside of the sun you understand what i mean <laughs> and here as well and um you do still have a really cool rhythm when you're doing this and catching your floats with three colors and it just flowed really really nicely i i really enjoyed knitting this yoke i think it's one of the most enjoyable color work experiences that i had even though it's typically the thing that i would uh, not go very smoothly with you know big motifs three colors and as a matter of fact no it was super enjoyable and yeah really really pleasant i um yeah i really uh i'm happy that i used uh Ulysse from the real natura which is a woolen span yarn and so it makes like this very nice smooth design which is really pretty and it makes it so much easier to you the floats so that i can get mean comments uh, about how they're so awful uh, but yeah it just it just is a great yarn for color work because it just makes everything your tension everything is fine <laughs> even if you mess up even if you are not used to making such motifs it just works really well so i'm really really happy with the result like i said i might tighten the neckline but i think that's yeah that's just me <laughs> really um and um uh, by the way it, you know you if it ever happens to you because i sometimes hear people say well this was knitted top down so i started here i cast on here and similarly if you knit bottom up you can in fact uh, take it off and do, go the other way uh, even if you can't unravel the cast on that's the thing cast ons are not easy to unravel as a bind off it's not as easy um but it's still possible to go the other way uh you what you have to do is pick up stitches so for example i would pick up like right under the ribbing because that would be um easy easy to identify area and then you would cut above one stitch so that you can basically detach the ribbing and then continue this way and if you ever doing a bottom up and for example you would like to you did bottom up sleeves and you need more length you can't really unravel a cast on it's really annoying <laughs> so what you do is you pick up you remove the thing and then you go the other way and if you ever have to do it in stockinette going both way in stockinette it's seamless uh, it works so it's just a little bit more of a uh, tricky preparation to pick up the stitches and cutting and uh, yeah you just cut one stitch basically so that you can unravel if you ever did an afterthought heel or for example when you do a convertible thing where you have to cut that is also uh, the same way basically but yeah uh, that is it for for this design uh, like i said i think it should be available as you're watching this and i need to take pictures of it now and uh, there's no absolutely no light today, so I, I'm full <laughs> with the artificial light, but I think it looks nice. I think I can take the pictures like this and uh, yeah. send them to the designer because I've been like the worst testers because I haven't... I don't have anything to say. <laughs> the pattern is really clear. Um, like it's really it's not really hand holding, but like there's not much to say. It's just very straightforward, very clear um yeah things are smooth um yeah so that is it for uh for this beautiful beautiful test knit and yeah that's all i have to say for this episode um quite short i will see you in a couple of weeks to start the 
because I will have some spring designs to announce and show you. Uh, we are starting with the light cardigan, the lace things, the little tops, etc. I know you usually like the, the summer knits here. So yes, it will be starting soon. And yeah, I hope you will enjoy. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching this episode. Have a lovely beginning of April. Um, and I hope it's not snowing where you are. <laughs> Here, I don't think we'll have snow, but it's definitely gonna be freezing, so rip our crops and our fruit trees, but <laughs> that's that's how it goes. And yeah, have a lovely evening, rest of the day, whenever it is when you're watching this, and I will see you next time. Bye!